when truth is called a lie, the lights go out, darkness falls, and indeed, if your light is darkness, how very deep will the darkness be? All the words in this book can be compressed into one word, the eternal word, Jesus the Christ. Under execution of criminals, the Catechism of Trent says, Another kind of lawful slain belongs to the civil authorities, to whom is entrusted the power of life and death, by the legal and judicious exercise of which they punish the guilty and protect the innocent. The just use of this power, far from involving the crime of murder, is an act of paramount obedience to this commandment which prohibits murder. The end of the commandment is the preservation and security of human life. Now the punishments inflicted by civil authority, which is the legitimate avenger of crime, naturally tend to this end, since they give security to life by repressing outrage and violence. Hence these words of David, In the morning I put to death all the wicked of the land, that I might cut off all the workers of iniquity from the city of the Lord. This is authentic Catholic teaching as it has been taught for almost 2,000 years. Civil authority is called the legitimate avenger of crime. The Catechism of Trent is consistent with St. Augustine, who wrote, There are some exceptions made to this divine authority to its own law, that men may not be put to death. He to whom authority is delegated, and who is but the sword in the hand of him who uses it, is not himself responsible for the death he deals. And accordingly, they who, in conformity with his laws, have represented in their persons the public justice or the wisdom of government, and in this capacity have put to death wicked men, such persons have by no means violated the commandment, Thou shalt not kill. So St. Augustine tells us that the state's authority to administer capital punishment involves justice, and not just taking an offender away from society where he might inflict additional harm. The Catechism of Trent is also in harmony with St. Thomas Aquinas, who wrote, If a man be dangerous and infectious to the community on account of some sin, it is praiseworthy and advantageous that he be killed in order to safeguard the common good, since a little leaven corrupteth the whole lump. Pope Leo X condemned the proposition that burning heretics is against the will of the Spirit. The Catechism of Pope St. Pius X says, Question. Are there cases in which it is lawful to kill? Answer. It is lawful to kill when fighting a just war, when carrying out by order of the supreme authority a sentence of death punishment of a crime, and finally in cases of necessary and lawful defense of one's own life against an unjust aggressor. So Catholic teaching was clear and consistent for almost 2,000 years. But then came the Second Vatican Council, and with it the Novus Ordo tried to change truth and illicitly tried to change Catholic doctrines. In doing so, the Novus Ordo Church lost its teaching authority. Nowhere is this made more clear than with the issue of capital punishment. The first illicit change to the Catholic doctrine regarding capital punishment came with the 1992 version of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. It said, Preserving the common good of society requires rendering the aggressor unable to inflict harm. For this reason, the traditional teaching of the Church has acknowledged as well-founded the right and duty of legitimate public authority to punish malefactors by means of penalties commensurate with the gravity of the crime not excluding, in cases of extreme gravity, the death penalty. So this paragraph tells us that the purpose of punishment is to render the aggressor unable to inflict harm. But that isn't the only purpose of punishment. We just read with St. Augustine, who told us that capital punishment also involves administering justice. The 1992 version continues. If bloodless means are sufficient to defend human lives against an aggressor and to protect public order and the safety of persons, Public authority should limit itself to such means, because they better correspond with the concrete conditions of the common good and are in more conformity to the dignity of the human person. This paragraph introduces a novelty that is nowhere to be found in any magisterial teaching prior to the Second Vatican Council. It is a recommendation that the state should limit itself to non-lethal means. And this view would be okay for a private person to hold, but it's ridiculous for it to appear in a catechism as authentic Catholic teaching. But the Novus Ordo Church tried to change truth again in 1997, and it changed the recommendation to use non-lethal means if capital punishment is not required to preserve public safety to making it an absolute requirement. There was still another revision to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and the latest version now says, 
Recourse to the death penalty on the part of legitimate authority following a fair trial was long considered an appropriate response to the gravity of certain crimes and an acceptable, albeit extreme, means of safeguarding the common good. Today, however, there is an increasing awareness that the dignity of the person is not lost even after the commission of a very serious crime. A new understanding has emerged of the significance of penal sanctions imposed by the state. Lastly, more effective systems of detention have been developed, which ensure the due protection of citizens, but at the same time, do not definitely deprive the guilty of the possibility of redemption. Consequently, the Church teaches, in the light of the Gospel, that the death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviolability and dignity of the person, and she works with determination for its abolition worldwide. All Catholics should know that truth can't change, so this paragraph should outrage Novus Ordo Catholics because it states outright that truth has changed with the times. There isn't even a pretense of development of doctrine. So in conclusion, the Catholic may personally oppose the death penalty because there have been several men who have been executed who were later proven innocent, or it might be opposed because it is extremely costly to execute a prisoner. But to oppose it, saying that the Catholic Church opposes it, is to prop up a falsehood and a lie. But I wonder where the language in the earliest 1992 version of the Catechism of the Catholic Church came from. This is an issue that cannot be traced back to any gradualism under Pope Pius XII. In an address in 1952, Pope Pius said, When it is a question of the execution of a condemned man, the state does not dispose of the individual's right to life. In this case, it is reserved to the public power to deprive the condemned person of the enjoyment of life in expiation of his crime, when, by his own crime, he has already disposed himself of his right to live. And this is consistent with 2,000 years of Catholic teaching. And later in that year, Pope Pius sent a request to President Eisenhower requesting clemency for the traitors Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, and he did this out of Christian mercy. But in the request, Pope Pius never questioned the state's authority to enforce capital punishment. So, as I question, where did the Novus Ordo Church come up with its 1992 language? The earliest similar language that I could find was in a 1960 article by Father Dennis Dougherty. It claims that the Church has always taught that the death penalty is permitted for serious crimes if such a penalty is necessary for the protection of society. As we've discussed in the video, the Church never taught such a thing. But the phrasing here suggests that he got this notion from somewhere else. And I'd like to do a follow-up video to trace this back, but I think that I need some help. If you know where this novelty came from, please comment down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back again within a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page and my Twitter page. Every day I post additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. And also, please pray for the church. Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Please, don't do it. Don't turn away till you hear what I say. Uh -uh. Don't do it.